I'm Joy Brown, and this is WebMD's Ask the Dentist. With Dr. Stephen Roth, a cosmetic and aesthetic specialist from Manhattan. Speed on three. Teleprompter up. Action. Okay, Dr. Roth, let's get started with today's topic, diseases that affect your teeth. And our first question, I'm a diabetic and have had white cottage cheese-like slime on my tongue for some months. I brush several times a day, but it keeps coming back. How can I treat this symptom? Well, first, let me just say that diabetes has tremendous effects on your oral health. And what you're noticing on your tongue is very likely some type of a candida infection or a yeast infection that's related to diabetes. And what do they do about the symptom? Is there well, anything they can do? Yes, do, there is. is. There, there, are, there are medications that can control the yeast infection, but there's also the factor of, is your diabetes well controlled? Because if it's well controlled, this shouldn't be happening. So the most important thing is to go back to your diabetes doctor and make sure that it's under control. So not something a dentist can really help you correct. We, we can help you with the symptoms, but the, the greater concern is your overall health and your diabetes. Got it. I have type 2 diabetes. I had to have a tooth pulled last month. Recently, another tooth is loose as well. Should I have that one pulled as well? It's not hurting, and I was kind of hoping it would tighten back. Teeth don't typically tighten back. When, when teeth are loose, it's because something is wrong with the gum and the bone around the tooth, and that's very common among diabetes patients. And we frequently see patients with advanced periodontal disease, which is disease of the gum and the bone, in patients with type 2 diabetes. Do they know why that's occurring? Why diabetes affects the teeth well, so It much? occurs for the same reasons that sometimes diabetics can lose a limb or have problems with blood supply to the limb. It's all about the blood supply in the mouth as well as the body's ability to fight off inflammation. I see. So get back into the doctor. And I think the diabetes has to be controlled and your entire oral health system needs to be diagnosed as to what exactly is going on. See your dentist. See your dentist. Yeah. Okay, great advice. My rheumatologist gave me a prescription for Requip for my leg and TMJ issues. He told me it should relax my legs and also my teeth grinding. Is this really true? I think it's very true that it can control the muscular activity and what's going on with the arthritis. But I think there's also the factor that we have to control what's happening to the teeth. So I wouldn't neglect getting a mouth guard or a proper diagnosis by the dentist when it comes to treating those teeth. So be sure that you... Be sure that they coordinate their treatment together, okay. the, the rheumatoid arthritis doctor as well as the dentist. Now our next question. I'm awaiting a liver transplant. My teeth are very bad and were infected, so my dentist pulled most of the teeth on the left side. I was wondering if this could be due to my medical condition. It could be due to the medical condition. It could also be due to what got you into that medical condition. We don't really know what caused it, so you will be on some what we call immune-suppressing drugs. So any sign of infection in your mouth has to be dealt with immediately. So take care of it before you go in for your treatment. There needs to be coordination between the dentist and the transplant doctor to make sure that everything is done the right way. But a lot of health issues are interrelated with oral health. Absolutely. Oral health is part of your body, and diseases don't just strike one little area. They strike everything. Okay. After undergoing chemo for five years, I suffer from a burning mouth and acidic taste 24-7, which causes me great distress. What can I do to relieve those symptoms? No dentist has been able to give me a straight answer. The straight answer part is because it's a difficult question. How do you relieve symptoms that are hard to relieve? the chemotherapy may have knocked out the normal flow of saliva. And saliva, besides just being what you drool sometimes, is a really important component of your body. The saliva bathes and protects your tissues in your mouth. It protects your teeth. It has what we call antibodies in them that prevent decay and gum disease. And when you get chemotherapy, a lot of times that will be completely knocked out and you get very irritated from not having the saliva. The best answer is there are saliva substitutes out there that you can sip on all day long to help. Yeah. There are actually certain candy-type lozenges that will help promote saliva into your mouth. So there are some answers, but you're also going to need to address the fact that you don't have the normal defense systems. 
So, you know, artificial saliva may not be enough. You may need to have fluoride treatments and some other care done as well. That's a great answer. It's probably the thing that they didn't realize. Yeah, it's, it's a tough subject. It really is. It could be very frustrating for a patient who doesn't have saliva to deal with. Well, certainly. Does it knock it out permanently? Or is In this some people, it's model? permanent, and it depends on where the chemo is being used for. And if it's radiation, it depends on which way the radiation is directed. Okay. Next question. Is it possible for a bad tooth to affect your sinuses? That's a great question. A bad tooth that's located next to your sinuses, such as teeth that are on your upper jaw in the back, which is this area, are sitting right next to your upper sinuses. Up here? Yeah. So sometimes people come in and think that they need a root canal and have a toothache, and their teeth are fine. They just have a sinus infection. Oh, wow. And then there are people that go to a sinus doctor that think they have a sinus infection, and they need a root canal. So sometimes you have to go back and forth between the dentist and the sinus doctor to make sure you have the right, accurate diagnosis. And sometimes it's just referred pain from some location other than teeth that are causing your sinuses to hurt. Where do you begin? <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm a dentist, <laughs> yes. so I begin with an x-ray. Okay. If I don't see a problem on the x-ray, I usually refer the patient to an ear, nose, and throat specialist. I have developed tonsil stones. I've dislodged them, but they seem to come back after a week or so. They don't cause me any pain or trouble, but I'd rather not have them in my mouth. Any tips on how to prevent these from coming back? Tonsil stones, to me, tells me that the patient may have a problem in one of their salivary glands where they're having stones build up, and that can affect salivary flow. If that's the problem, nobody really knows how to stop them. We just know how to treat the problem once the tonsil stones start affecting the salivary glands. And the best way to treat them would be to see a specialist, probably an oral surgeon or a salivary gland specialist, have them diagnose the problem and have them prescribe the correct medications and antibiotics to solve the problem. It sounds like this person knows what a tonsil stone is, though. So they must have had them looked at? I wouldn't know what one was. I... They must have had some type of a diagnosis, but stones don't typically form in the tonsils. They may form in the salivary glands. And the salivary glands are close to the tonsils, so they're probably calling it tonsil stones. So oral surgeon or a salivary gland or a salivary. specialist. Yes. I wouldn't have known there was such There thing. are some. Okay. My son's dentist of seven years blames bad hygiene for multiple cavities and root canals my son has spent thousands of dollars on. Another dentist said dry mouth is the reason for his tooth decay. Could this be true? It could be true, and I would say if it's a child or a teenager you're talking about, why do they have dry mouth? Is there some other medical condition or substance abuse issue that could be causing the dry mouth? And I think that what's really important is to have a, a frank discussion with the child or teenager and find out what's really going on with them before making a conclusion on why they're getting the decay. There are some people that decay genetically, and there are some people with bad oral hygiene. There are some people who use illicit drugs that can cause a loss of salivary flow and can cause damage from the drugs. So there are multiple reasons for dry mouth to begin with. There are multiple reasons, but in a normal, healthy teenager, if that's what we're talking about, there, there has to be a reason. Back to our next question. Can iron supplements, pills, cause damage to teeth and also discolored dentures? Iron supplements will discolor the teeth, but it's reversible and it's removable. It will put external stains on teeth, external meaning outside of the teeth, but it can do the same thing to your dentures because they're in your mouth. So they can discolor. It's nothing to really worry about. If you're on the iron supplements, you need them. Your doctor prescribed them. So just tell the dentist that you're on them, and they'll deal with the problem. Deal with it bleaching or just to ge Either general bleaching cleaning. or stain removal by a dental hygienist or a dentist who cleans your teeth. Okay, but the discoloration isn't happening from the inside? No. Okay. When are dental implants not suitable for diabetics? So an accurate diagnosis of diabetes and whether it's controlled is absolutely necessary before even thinking about doing a dental implant. Dental implants will not be suitable for diabetics if the quality of their bone isn't good. Uh, the blood supply in diabetics sometimes has a problem, and that's why you see diabetics who can have a limb in danger of being amputated because they don't have good blood supply. 
and they can't fight off infection. So if you try to put a foreign body in that patient's mouth with uncontrolled diabetes, the implant's not going to work. So the bone has to be healthy. The bone has to be healthy. And the gum. And so does the gum and the tissues in the mouth have to be healthy. If my daughter is taking doxycycline for a bacterial infection for 10 days, will that affect the enamel on her teeth since it's known as a tetracycline antibiotic? She also was prescribed it once for acne. Doxycycline is probably the most prescribed anti-acne drug. And people that have tetracycline stain in their teeth, and that's a, that's a common condition, got that antibiotic while those teeth were developing. So if your daughter is already a teenager, it's not a danger. It's not going to affect her teeth. Um, you don't have to worry about it. And it sounds like a 10-day, a short-term thing. So we don't need to worry about antibiotic staining teeth if it's a short-term treatment maybe? If it's a short-term treatment, but if it's a short-term treatment while those teeth are being developed, let's say in a five or a six-year-old, then you do have to worry about it and you should ask questions of the doctor who prescribes the antibiotic. But the older we are, Once the less you're a teenager, you have all of your teeth, the antibiotic cannot affect the color of the teeth. Good They've already know. been developed. Okay. I have severe acid reflux at night that burns my throat and teeth, and I'm worried about how it's affecting my teeth. One tooth is completely broken. What can I do to protect my teeth? It sounds like the biggest problem is the acid reflux. And acid reflux is when stomach acid comes up the esophagus into the mouth. It can cause heartburn, it could cause chest pain, but it also can damage teeth. I've seen patients who sleep on one side where the acid has dissolved the tops of the teeth on one side of their mouth and the other side looks completely healthy. So as important as it is to make sure those teeth are, are healthy and not being destroyed, if you're getting that amount of acid up your esophagus, that can cause some serious, serious problems with your esophagus. So what I would do is go right back to the doctor and make sure that that acid reflux is under control because there are medications that can control it. The second step would be to have the dentist assess how much damage has been done to those teeth and either fix them or create some protective devices to maybe protect those teeth. But acid staining is something that does damage the teeth, so this person is right to be concerned. And you can tell, can you pick up the signs of acid staining fairly easily? Yeah, a acid erosion is what we call it. Um, will dissolve the enamel right off the teeth. And typically, it'll look like a very smooth pattern on the teeth. I don't expect a patient to recognize it, but a dentist will. And it's a, it's a big problem. We see it a lot. Okay. I take a bisphosphonate drug for osteoporosis. I need to get dental implants, but they have a connection to jaw necrosis. Is there a way to proceed with my osteoporosis treatment and fix my teeth, too? Well, I would say the osteoporosis is the biggest problem and you're on the bisphosphonate drugs for a reason because you're losing bone. There is a connection between oral health and the bisphosphonate drugs, and there's no question that taking those drugs is a contraindication for getting dental implants, but the research hasn't been completed yet, so we don't know exactly who's going to have a problem and who isn't. So sometimes there are alternatives to implants, such as removable dentures or fixed dentures, which are bridges, and I think you need to have a, a frank discussion with the dentist and the oral surgeon or periodontist who's going to place the implants about whether your bisphosphonate drug use is going to affect the health of those implants. Uh, so the, the osteoporosis, though, treating it, you can't slack off on that. No, Just to... you have to prioritize here, yeah. and the priority is the osteoporosis. So you get that and keep taking those drugs. But you said contra indicate. <laughs> contraindicated is a big Latin word, yes. <laughs> and contraindicated means you shouldn't do it. Thank you, Dr. Roth. Great Thank information. You.